Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Well, in continuation to what we had discussed in the last lecture on uh, social ecology, which is uh, uh, strongly espoused uh, in the light of what uh, Murray Bookchin has talked about, and uh, slightly in continuation to that, uh, we will be looking in today's lecture uh, on ecofeminism or which, which I call as ecological feminist uh, philosophies. And in this lecture, we will try to see what eco ecofeminism stands for and what are the kind of uh, inherent problems which are being raised within the, this uh, feminist perspective on the issue of uh, ecology. And also in the latter part, we will try to uh, bring in uh, some insights from the Indian context by looking at the Chipko movement, which of course is known to be the first uh, eco feminist movement uh, in the Indian subcontinent. Now, uh, what normally uh, is being focused in this lecture uh, or in general, what eco feminism or eco ecological feminist uh, philosophies talks about. It, it, it tries to draw a connection between uh, feminism and environment uh, that is uh, within the uh, theme of environmental ethics and also uh, a connection between uh, the domination of women and domination of uh, nature which in a way is uh, operationalized simultaneously. Now, uh, uh, in, in, in the last lecture as I said in social ecology, we, we try to look at how uh, the inherent social problems or the kind of the structure of society in a way is responsible for the attitudes and actions towards uh, nature, the way we relate ourselves with nature. So, that sort of uh, the sense of dominating nature, uh, dominating uh, perspective or notion of thinking over nature is uh, to be sort of located in the social context. Now, uh, similarly, even in the context of this uh, eco feminism, it tries to draw how the idea of uh, the patriarchal mindset of domination of women in a way is also uh, to some extent responsible for this idea of domination of nature. Now, uh, also perhaps this is one of the main uh, gist or trust of the uh, feminist ecological movement which has of course started uh, from the west. And uh, for those who, who are not really familiar about what feminism is, uh, it, it, it of course has started way back in the uh, 19th century, uh, way back in the uh, US, where there are different uh, you know, trends of uh, feminist movement. The earliest feminist movement of course was on the demand for political rights that is the voting rights uh, in America. And then similarly over the years this feminist movement has evolved and tries to address certain issues concerning women and ecological feminism or ecology has also perhaps been one of the uh, main focus of uh, feminist movement. 
this particular term ecofeminism uh, was coined by a French feminist by the name called uh, Francoise E. Bond. Now, uh, uh, this particular term was coined uh, in the 1974 in the uh, 70s and by coming up with this particular term, what does Francoise tries to you know uh, talk about and uh, try to you know emphasize upon. It. Now, the term was uh, sort of uh, meant to describe how human race could be saved by women. Now, women in a way is uh, sort of being uh, seen to be uh, not just a producer, but also a savior. That is, uh, with the kind of ecological problems and crisis we witness, uh, the only alter one alternative which the feminists perhaps come up with is to you know uh, uh, put the prefix uh, eco before feminism and then uh, eco feminism which strongly advocated about how the human race if not the environment could be saved by women by initiating uh, an ecological uh, revolution. So, as a way to you know counter the oppression of women, that is one, and at the same time, the oppression and destruction of nature on the other. So these two, that is the oppression of women and the oppression or destruction of nature, in a way should be seen as a twin process. And uh, if the destruction of uh, nature has to be stopped. The oppression, similar on the other hand, uh, the oppression of on women should be uh, sort of stopped and uprooted. So only then there will be sort of a lasting solution. Now, ecofeminism is uh, eco ecological because the preservation, uh, the emphasis is on preservation of the ecosystem, and also uh, this perhaps is the main focus and objective. Uh, of uh, ecofeminism and also the feminist uh, on the basis that it offers uh, ways to recognize and counter uh, male favoritism. Uh, in the last lecture we also talk about why uh, you know the technological advancement or technology is not the key to solving the ecological problems because the more finer and finer or technology is being uh, modernized, it, it sort of uh, give an upper edge to the man or the male because uh, it is more user friendly to them and in the process, uh, the space of women is being you know, uh, narrowed down and they are being brushed aside and isolated in the whole process of this uh, sort of evolutionary process which we have dealt and located in the context of uh, social ecology. Now, similarly, this sort of uh, favoritism which is mainly uh, being uh, you know uh, given to the mill should in a way be uh, uh, counter or uh, vehemently opposed and uh, in order to preserve the ecosystem is something which ecofeminism strongly talked about. Now, what does this uh, eco ecological feminist philosophy in a way uh, tries to highlight and then what are the guiding principles of this philosophy. Now, eco ecological feminism is uh, a variety of uh, uh, one among those uh, different uh, feminist perspective, which uh, of course uh, focuses on the nature of uh, the connection between the feminism of women and the other oppressed humans and the domination of nature. So, it does not limit to the domestic space where women in a way is being oppressed. Rather, it also tries to you know 
go beyond the boundary of the domestic space that is uh, how other humans are all being oppressed or how they are being uh, sort of uh, exploited by other fellow humans and also the uh, idea of domination of nature has to be you know uh, <coughs> addressed. This is something what ecological feminis feminism uh, strongly espoused. Now, ecological feminist philosophy uh, in a way is uh, an, a philosophical approach which emphasizes uh, to the variety of different connections between feminism and environment and uh, how does one tries to you know connect uh, between feminism and environment. Is it simply uh, the economic factors or certain other factors? So, in some way the social is being expanded and then it tries to look beyond the social structure and of course, the starting point is uh, uh, socially constructed and, and, and then it moves on to other domain. Now, this different perspective of uh, some of the fem feminist perspective can be you know uh, divided into different uh, uh, ideology or school of thought that is the liberal, uh, it can be the traditional Marxist, can be radical and socialist feminism. Now, uh, the feminist philosophy in a way can be break down into uh, different uh, school of thought. Now, what does the uh, feminists in general uh, have in common that is what all eco feminist philosophers uh, you know tries to uh, uh, sort of question is the view that there are important connections between the uh, domination of women and other human subordinates the other human subordinates are those uh, mostly the uh, half nots or we can talk about those uh, the farmers if not the working class uh, who does not have much of a say or a stake in terms of relating themselves to the nature or natural resources. And the domination of nature and that uh, a failure to recognize these connections in a way has immensely uh, uh, resulted in inadequate feminism, environmentalism and environmental philosophy. So, therefore, this all add together in a way is perhaps one of the main focus of co-feminist philosophers and, and they have in a way contributed uh, differently of how to counter this idea of uh, oppression of women if not domination of women and alongside the domination of nature. Now, as the ecological feminism or eco feminism talked about, uh, there is a deep connection between feminism and environment and, and how does one situate and locate this connection. And of course, uh, one needs to look back at history and tries to link and uh, uh, find out the causal relationship between these two. Now, ecofeminism is perhaps uh, a recent development in feminist thought, uh, which strongly argues that uh, the current global uh, environmental crisis is uh, a predictable outcome of the patriarchal culture. So, historical, historically one needs to you know uh, uh, situate how this environmental crisis began and of course, ideology is important and this patriarchal culture or ideology is uh, pretty much influenced by uh, the uh, dominating if not authoritarian character or uh, how uh, men perceive 
women. Now, therefore, this perhaps can be the starting point of how uh, this idea of uh, the crisis uh, in a way has been uh, witnessed and encountered at this recent time. And, and perhaps you can also uh, look at some of uh, the eco feminists like uh, Spernat and Riesler, who also tries to trace the historical and causal connections uh, to the prototypical uh, patterns of domination, which began uh, uh, right from the uh, period when uh, the Indo European societies were invaded. Mostly, the colonial encounters which of course is being witnessed by many of the native and aboriginals in a way has sort of tries to look at uh, or if not the beginning of this uh, idea of domination began from the uh, colonial period. Now, Rain Esler in a, describes the time uh, before this invasion as sort of matrilocal, matrilineal, peaceful, agrarian era. Now, perhaps with the uh, evolution of time, that is the post invasion, uh, many of the eco feminists in a way tries to uh, espouse that the boundary or the space of women are being invaded and it somehow had you know led to a different way of uh, looking at uh, what what family used to have been because earlier the kinship relations were being strong and when the sort of the simple agrarian community were seen to be much more peaceful and and Ruther also focus on the historical role played by rationalism and important conceptual dualism in classical Greek philosophy. Now, uh, still other feminists like uh, Carol, uh, Carolyn Merchant and Vandana Siva attempts to focus on the cultural and scientific changes, uh, which uh, of course uh, were responsible for the exploitation of nature and uh, which of course uh, with the scientific advancement has resulted to unchecked commercial and industrial expansion and also uh, eventually to the subordination of women. Now, therefore, there are different you know trends which are being perspective which are being followed by the feminists themselves. Uh, who, who tries to draw the connections by tracing the historicity and the causal relationship uh, and, and uh, on the other why uh, this sort of domination is to be located and contextualized uh, by focusing on the cultural and uh, uh, scientific development. Now, and which all have in a way contributed to the you know subordination of women. Now, uh, if you look at the way in which domination has uh, or the idea of domination is being exercised or operationalized. Now, the eco-feminist and ecological uh, feminist philosophers uh, namely Griffin and Merchant or Plumwood have uh, categorically argued that ultimately this historical and uh, causal links between uh, the domination of women and uh, of nature are to be located uh, in conceptual structure of domination and also in the way how women and nature have been conceptualized particularly in the western intellectual tradition. Now, why this has to be in a way uh, Si uh, segregated and looks from the western intellectual tradition and uh, to what extent this idea is different in other parts of the world. We will come to that uh, in the later part of uh, our discussion. And to begin with, 
since this uh, sort of uh, notion of thinking or this idea or the ideology is being guided or contextualized within this western intellectual traditions which in a way talks about uh, rationality reason and uh, how uh, men are sort of uh, supposed to be you know uh, guided by rational action in a way has to be uh, historically located. Now, as I said this uh, domination of women and nature is uh, a twin process and, and therefore, this twin domination of women and nature uh, is to be seen in terms of a value dualism that is uh, disjunctive pairs in which this disjuncts are seen as oppositional rather than as complementary or complementarity and, and, and rather as exclusive and, uh, and opposite to what it is being to be seen as inclusive. So, it is this sort of uh, dualism has been inherent and, and, and also the value hierarchies that is how this hierarchy is being organized and uh, which, which in a way has include uh, reason uh, in opposing in opposed to uh, emotion, mind, body, culture, nature, human nature and men, women uh, dichotomies. So, all this dualism in a way has to be uh, sort of uh, seen as a disjunctive, disjunctive peers in the context of uh, the history and causal uh, connections between uh, women and nature. Uh, one particular role of feminism and environmental ethics in this context is to you know uh, challenge and attempts to expose and dismantle these dualisms that what we had discussed that rational emotion uh, mind, body, so on and so forth. So, this dualism needs to be dismantled or deconstruct and all and, and in the process one needs to rethink and uh, reconceive those mainstay of philosophical, philosophical notions particularly reason, rationality, knowledge, objectivity, the self as knower and moral agent which perhaps rely on them. Now, within this conceptual framework, uh, one can look and talk about the oppressive patriarchal uh, mindset which has been operating right from the dawn of history and uh, uh, which of course, has particularly uh, sprang up in a volatile manner in the uh, post invasion period. And within this conceptual framework if you look at there is uh, all social ism of domination example racism uh, talk about uh, classicism talk about heterosexism sexism as well as naturism or the unjustified domination of non human nature are to be you know clubbed together within the uh, rubric of this oppre oppressive patriarchal uh, framework. Now, what is this uh, idea of empirical and experiential? Empirical in a way is uh, empirical and experiential is uh, again based on rationality and uh, many eco feminists and ecological feminists philosophers have uh, done an extensive research and documented the empirical uh, evidence by linking feminism and the environment. How? Because uh, some of these eco feminists and uh, uh, eco feminist philosophers cite their experiential connections which honor and celebrate uh, important cultural and spiritual ties of women and indigenous peoples in the 
in, in terms of the natural resource management or their relationship with the uh, forest or the environment. Now, uh, based on an extensive case studies uh, in different uh, cultural groups and societies, they, 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 they come up with an empirical data and, and tries to look at how uh, women in a way occupies uh, an important position in the relationship with uh, the spirituality uh, uh, po uh, status or uh, position. Now, uh, alongside uh, this critical theory in a way provides a critique of the nature versus culture. How? Because uh, through an uh, epistemological structure for critiquing the relationship between the domination of women and domination of nature. So, critical theory in a way tries to uh, you know challenge this uh, dualism which exists between nature and culture and uh, by critiquing this dualism or dichotomy. It, it also tries to you know uh, looked at uh, in a more critical manner the way how uh, uh, domination of women and domination of nature is related, how this has to be perceived in a similar manner. Now, many eco feminists like uh, Murphy and Sale attempts to explore the symbolic association and uh, devalu devaluation of women and nature that appears in art, literature, religion and theology. So, they try to locate the uh, symbolic uh, importance or the symbolic meaning which is inherent uh, in, 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 in terms to uh, you know explore the position of women, how they are being sort of uh, devaluate uh, the relationship between women and nature or uh, the personification of women as nature, how they are being personified uh, in, in, in different uh, you know aspects like art, literature, religion so and so forth. Now, the other eco feminist also explores the symbolic connections between the sexist and naturalist language that is how language uh, inferiorize women and non human nature. Now, the manner in which vocabularies or uh, language are being used in a way also uh, to some extent relate uh, or, or tends to so an oppressive and uh, you know dominating ideas on women. Now, things which are soft or which are you know uh, much more seen to be uh, needing a care is often time being related with women. For instance, flowers or maybe for instance uh, you know even the idea of how we give meanings or relate to colors like for example, the uh, pink and so and so forth are always uh, you know uh, seen to be symbolizing this uh, feminine character. So, these are something how languages are also developed in a cultural group and uh, uh, and, and this perhaps has tends to you know uh, sort of communicate and relate uh, women with the non human nature. Now, this may also uh, involve perhaps the feminist uh, tends to raise questions about whether this sex gender language used to describe mother nature. Mother nature why? Because uh, nature is seen to be something which as seen as the provider. Now, and uh, since nature is located in this domain of the provider, uh, the, it, 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 it is to some extent seen as a mother figure. 
So, perhaps maybe uh, one idea or the main uh, challenges which the feminist in a way tries to question is also about uh, how uh, sex gender language is being used. Nature is often uh, described uh, in female and sexual jargons. Uh, for instance, nature is to be often times we use the term exploited. We can also use uh, like nature is being raped, mastered, conquered, controlled, mined and also tame. The word tame in a way is also being used in the social context because women mostly uh, often times are being seen to be you know suppressed and tame. And, and, uh, maybe even in the Indian, Indian context, you would come across how the Jat community in a way uh, treated their women and, and how uh, this sort of idea of you know domesticating or maybe uh, suppressing women has been sort of a cultural experience in different societies uh, differently. Uh, across time and across uh, region. Now, her secrets are in a way penetrated and her wombs is put into the services of uh, the man of science. Now, interestingly as I was talking about the different uh, you know uh, perspective on the, uh, feminism like uh, the liberal, the radical and the Marxist. Now, uh, the Marxist ecofeminist or the Marxist feminist in a way uh, tends to uh, equate the kind of uh, uh, exploitation which is being meted out to women as uh, something called doubly exploited. Now, even if you uh, forget about the modern industrial society, even in the simple agriculture uh, uh, community or society, uh, uh, when there is no much of a gender discrimination or maybe until the realization came into being, women were still being doubly exploited. Because the Marxist feminist talks about how the amount of input and the amount of uh, work or hours or number of hours which a woman has to you know sort of uh, uh, talk about or uh, in, in terms of the production how they involve. Now, for instance, a woman in a way does a number of domestic course and uh, maybe from the dawn to you know maybe in the morning and then it continues and after a point uh, maybe the husband and the wife goes to the field and uh, you know toil the whole day and come back again and women uh, does not still have a leisure time because she has to engage herself and be keep herself busy with the other cooking, caring, feeding so and so forth. Now, if you look at the number of hours or if not the amount of uh, labor one has uh, sort of exerted women in a way has uh, been uh, sort of uh, exerted a lot numbers and at the end of the day when the, uh, the harvesting comes ultimately the products that is the food crops is in a way owned by the man that is uh, presumed to be you know like the head of the family. Now, even when the women has uh, sort of labor so much. Uh, the final product, she does not have much of a say and a control. So, in a way, the Marxist feminist tends to see that as uh, not from the perspective of alienation, but rather as uh, women are being doubly exploited. Now, uh, even in the modern uh, uh, contemporary period, we can always look at uh, women which are, you know, seen to be. Uh, the kind of uh, terms and 
jargons which uh, a man usually use if uh, their spouse is not uh, an employee. Uh, for instance, in a normal con con conversation, you'll come across that what does a wife do, and then the husband would normally say that, uh, "Oh, she's a housewife." Now, this particular uses of this, uh, you know, uh, gender sec uh, sexually segregated gender language is something which the feminist if not the eco feminist tries to restructure and then uh, uh, reconceive because all these uh, jargons in a way are impregnated with the psyche which is revolving around uh, in the society and this perhaps in a way is also how we relate to you know nature as not something uh, rather as a provider and then which needs to be you know exploited which has to be you know tame and then wherein uh, nature is seen to be you know the provider of wealth and then uh, men successively with the use of maybe science and technology you know have uh, tends to uh, engage in exploiting or extracting of uh, resources. Now, if you look at this, uh, the ecofeminist philosophical ethic, uh, uh, mostly in the literature on feminism and environment, has in a way linked it to uh, ethically, and then one one needs to look at the moral and spiritual uh, dimension, and 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 how women are being positioned. Uh, or to be linked with in terms of uh, the environment or maybe in other aspects that is in art literature and so on and so forth. Perhaps uh, one of the popular claim is that uh, the, in the interconnections bit, uh, among uh, these conceptualizations and treatment of women vis a vis animals and non-human nature require a feminist ethical uh, analysis and responses. So, maybe this can in a way perhaps tries to uh, restructure or deconstruct the psyche which has been inherent in uh, different cultural groups and society. Now, minimally the goal of this feminist environmental ethics is to develop theories and practices as, as we had talked about how the scholars and philosophers were engaging in uh, collecting certain kind of experiences and data, empirical data in order to uh, look at how uh, women, uh, the position of women is to be you know uh, restructured. The concerns regarding uh, humans and natural environment which are again uh, not not simply based on the idea of western patriarchal mindset or uh, male bias and which provide a guide to the you know action in the pre feminist present now this environmental ethics or the philosophical ethics uh, tends to recognize the the significant uh, relationship shared among the indefensible treatment of women and of nature and they involve a certain kind of commitment to developing ethics which are not male bias or rather which is not purely guided by the uh, science or scientific ideas which in a way is uh, uh, guided by the Cartesian uh, principles. Now, if you try to uh, position or talk about how uh, the domination of nature in a way is to be linked and related with the domination of women, these critics based on the domination of nature in a way uh, tends to uh, surpass and goes beyond the mere condemnation of 
the ecological crisis to reveal a connection between the domination of non-human nature, social domination and psychological domination. And uh, uh, these philosophers argue that as nature comes to be viewed as uh, nothing more than the material for human domination, we develop certain kind of an anthropocentric view that is man above nature, in, in which we see ourselves as measure of all things. Now, nature then uh, ultimately becomes an external other, merely the stuff of domination. So, that sort of boundary or demarcation often times arises the moment when nature is being perceived as uh, the other, uh, which, which does not have a connection or a relation with human and old. Now, perhaps uh, Marx's critique of this capitalist exploitation is renewed and extended in a critique of the domination of nature that attempts to uncover the psychic and social basis of the solidification of this repressive society. Now, uh, the question is should we say that the modern industrial society is repressive or oppressive. So, one can you know uh, critically look at or observe the manner in which uh, how this idea of uh, domination or relationship with nature is uh, you know being perceived. The domination of nature in a way is shown to you know until the social and uh, psychic consequences that result in the ecological crisis. Uh, for example, the patriarchal domination and the repressive political forms in both the capitalist and the socialist societies. Now, what then, what then would be the uh, best uh, possible or uh, best societies? Is it the capitalist or the socialist? Now, uh, in social ecology, uh, we also talk about how the property or resources are to be, you know, owned by the community, or this community ownership should be inculcated. But, but to what extent will, will that you know affect or change the perhaps the psychological dimension in terms of how we relate to nature. So, will that be you know a feasible or uh, an a lasting solution. Now, the instrumental region is revealed as the specific form of region through which nature is mastered. Now, instrumental region again is guided by you know the accumulation or the idea of that the nature is to be wrapped, tamed, uh, so on and so forth uh, in the basic interest of human to serve their own purpose. Now, uh, as I was talking, uh, we, we, we need to you know locate. Um, uh, women uh, in the spiritual uh, dimension. Sandilands uh, describe this spiritual ecofeminism as, uh, where I quote, the resacralization of nature of the divine feminine inherent in all living beings. It is, it is seen as a part of uh, a process of reconnection or reestablishment of ways of knowing and being in the world that have been lost in the history of patriarchal domination. Now, what then is spiritual uh, ecofeminism? So, in a way it tries to develop or reconnect uh, women to nature and uh, uh, if you uh, you know looked at the uh, uh, Googled uh, for, for more information or for you to have uh, a basic idea of this, you can uh, look at the works of uh, how uh, the rediscovery or reinvention of uh, the Garden of Eden. 
So, if you type reinvention or rediscovery of Eden, you will you'll come up uh, you will come up with a certain uh, feminist who tries to uh, espouse uh, by drawing the sanctity and to redraw the connection between women and nature, which perhaps is being uh, uh, destroyed or disrupted as a result of the patriarchal domination. Now, spiritual dom uh, ecofeminism is nothing but it, it tries to, you know, uh, uh, bring in the uh, sacredness or sanctity of women's relationship with nature. Now, this idea that uh, women are because of their womanhood uh, spiritually close to nature is central to the ecofeminist thought and is in a way mani manifested and shown in different forms uh, of uh, how uh, nature is related to religion, uh, maybe even the, in the west or in the east, often in forms of worshipping in the inner good uh, goddess that resides in the women. Now, we will try to uh, best exemplify this in the context of uh, India, uh, how in the Indian con cosmology, how women is being perceived uh, with a with nature. Now, from the Indian point uh, of uh, the Indian point of view uh, of how uh, cosmology is being situated in both the exoteric and esoteric traditions, uh, the world in a way is being produced and renewed by the sort of the interplay of uh, dialectical uh, relations between the creation and the destruction, cohesion and de uh, disintegration. Now, from this uh, uh, perspective that is the Indian cosmology, women uh, in a way has uh, sort of to be you know seen as an interplay uh, of these exoteric and esoteric traditions. Nature uh, respective of whether it is animate or inanimate is thus uh, an expression of energy that is the sakti and uh, the feminine creative principles of the cosmos in conjunction with the masculine principle that is the purusa, namely uh, with nature that is prakriti uh, all together you know creates the world. So, therefore, uh, from the uh, viewpoint of Indian cosmology, it is uh, this idea of uh, you know the interplay of this sakti purusa and then prakriti in a way is uh, responsible for creating the world now how does one tries to locate uh, the domination of uh, nature or domination of women or if not men versus nature uh, from the perspective of the west and India or the Indian context. Now, if you look at uh, different literatures um, or scholarly works, the contemporary the western views of nature are uh, you know loaded with the dichotomy or duality between men and women or uh, person and nature. So, in a way this dualism or dichotomy which exists between uh, all these are sort of seen as uh, how women are being you know uh, perceived. Now, in Indian cosmology by contrast person and nature that is the purusa and prakriti are a duality in unity. They are inseparable com com complements of one another in nature in woman in man that is uh, women and men are uh, together and they are insepar inseparable entity. Now, this idea of dualism which is uh, seen in the context of the western world is something which is uh, uh, you know unknown and uh, unacceptable from the Indian cosmological point of view. Now, every form of creation 
you know bears the science of this dialectical unity that is unity of diversity within a unifying principle and this dialectical uh, harmony between the male and female principles and between nature and man becomes the basis of the ecological thought and uh, perspective in the Indian context. Now, it is pretty much uh, evident and clear that there is this sort of dualism and dichotomy, dichotomy which exists between man and nature is not something which has uh, which is present in the early classical text of uh, the Indian cosmology. Now, how is this environment then perceived as a resource? As I often talk about uh, this Cartesian concept uh, tends to you know perceive environment as a resource uh, of uh, putting this dualism that as environment as separate from man. Now, this dualism between man and nature has in a way uh, uh, you know resulted into the uh, subjugation if not domination of uh, the latter by man and given uh, and, ha and, and it has resulted to you know the new world view in which nature is seen as inert and passive and also uniform and mechanistic also separable and fragmented within itself uh, separate from man and also inferior to be dominated and exploited by man. Now, this Cartesian concept or the western notion of uh, uh, perceiving the environment in a way has you know led to the rise of a new world and, and, and sort of give a new meaning to nature, how it is being uh, you know seen to be uh, not, not just uh, anthropocentric, but also to be uh, seen as uh, in, from an instrumental uh, point of view. The rapture between, uh, within this uh, nature and uh, between man and nature is in a way as an associated transformation from a life force that also sustains to exploitable resource characteristic from the Cartesian viewpoint. Now, ecological ways of knowing uh, nature are necessarily in a way uh, participatory. Now, nature herself is the experiment and women as uh, you know which is pretty much engaged uh, in silviculturalist, agriculturalist and water resources managers, traditional natural scientists are in a way uh, you know to be linked that women is uh, no nature as women and nature are both passive in character. Their knowledge is ecological and plural, plural which also reflect both the diversity of natural ecosystem and the diversity in culture that nature based living rise to. Now, therefore, this idea of how uh, eco feminists tries to locate and espouses it, the women have much more of a holistic knowledge and then their way uh, the way they handled uh, nature is uh, not just from the uh, idea of uh, or a notion of uh, the earth being a provider but in return uh, women in a way or man has uh, a responsibility to you know take care of the earth so therefore this uh, mutually if not a harmonious relationship can in a way be established. Now, with the violation or with the excessive exploitation of nature often time is linked with uh, the violation or uh, the uh, oppressive stance which is uh, being meted out to women especially in the third world. Women produce not just produce, but also reproduce life by uh, not merely uh, through the biological uh, forces, but also through their social role 
in providing sustenance. Now, all ecological societies uh, of forest dwellers and pigeons, now I am talking about uh, how this idea of nature or women is being perceived in the third world countries. Now, whose life is organized on the principle of sustainability and reproduction of life in all its richness also embody the feminine principles. Now, this idea of the produce and reproduce has to be you know located not just from the standpoint of uh, a biological perspective, but also in terms of their social role in providing sustenance. Now, Maria Mice has called women's work in producing sustenance that is the production of life and also view it as a truly productive relationship to nature because women not only you know engage themselves in uh, gathering food or consumed what grew in nature, but they made things grow. So, this idea of reproducing is pretty much innate in the uh, character of uh, a woman. So, therefore, they, they draw certain kind of a deep connections, particularly in the third world countries that uh, they are pretty much dependent on the natural surroundings because uh, uh, it, it, it not just only provide uh, you know uh, a foot, but also certain other requirements. In the works of uh, uh, Vandana Shiva, you can actually uh, see how uh, women in a way relies on their surrounding natural resources, not just for their consumption, but also as providing an extra income by selling all those uh, forest products to the nearby markets. So, in a way uh, they have that kind of you know uh, <coughs> dependence on uh, nature. Therefore, this women's interaction with nature with their own nature as well as the external environment was sort of a reciprocal process and they, they, they tends to conceive of their own bodies as being uh, productive in the same way as they conceive external nature as being so. So, therefore, uh, when one's uh, sort of uh, a realization or an ecological awareness is important in this context and uh, perhaps the standpoint or the uh, perspective in the third world countries in a way can uh, perhaps be you know linked with the idea what the eco-feminists 